Welcome back to BJP Lifestyle guys. I hope you're having a great day. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button down below right now to be notified when new videos go live. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. here on the channel, so make sure you don't miss out on those. And if you guys can get me to 10,000 subscribers by the end of June here on this channel, which I don't think you guys can, it's kind of a challenge, but if you guys can do it, then I will get the Jeep logo tattooed on me, so if you want to be a part of that, make sure you click that subscribe button right now. Now, I've been wanting to do this video for a long, long time. It is an insanely hot day out here today, and I'm out here recording this video for you guys so hopefully you guys appreciate that but this video is gonna have a lot of overlays in it and just kind of me talking and uh, basically you've seen by the title and the thumbnail that this is gonna be building my Jeep in X amount of time so I have a list of things I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna go over each thing in the order that I did it if you guys want to watch the video on how I did the install or anything more in depth about it or get the links to these products there will be a pop-up up here along the screen the whole time for a playlist for Jeeps It'll just say Jeeps, and it'll be a big playlist of like 120 videos. That's gonna be where you're gonna find all the videos of the installs of everything that I've done here on the Jeep. So if you guys wanna check that out, then go ahead. I'll also have it linked to the top of the description to that playlist so you guys can check out all the Jeep videos and find the specific one that you're looking for for that specific mod. So I'm gonna pop up some pictures here that's gonna show what my Jeep looked like. These are the actual Jeep, or the actual photos from the dealership when I went to purchase the car. This is what they had up there, the photos that they took of the car when it, before I even bought it. Um, this is what I saw online when I went to go look at it. So as you can see, there was nothing done to it at all. It was bone stock. It was a leased vehicle that had been returned and uh, I ended up with it. So yeah, I had nothing done to it. So now it was time for me to start my journey here and start doing all the stuff to make it look like it does now. And then, you know, there's still more to go. So that was what it looked like when I first got it. And then the first thing I did to it was a license plate frame because there was rattle in the back with the plate frame from the subwoofer. So I went ahead and got that on Amazon and it was like my first video and it was awful. Um, it wasn't actually my first video, but I had awful quality. Didn't know really what I was doing. You guys can tell that I've improved a lot. If you guys go check that video out, you guys will see that this video is a million times better. So I basically had everything planned out that I was kind of wanting to do for it as far as the basic stuff when I first got it there was kind of I, before I even got it I was already looking into things I could do and the things that I wanted to do now the one thing that really caught my eye was red calibers on a white Jeep tinted out with black everything so that's why I went with the altitude package that you guys see here um, so I did the red calipers, which I just used a deep dupla color kit, which was brush on, and I just basically did that full video on that. Like I said, everything will have a full video on that playlist, so check it out top of the description or up here in the top of the video. So I did the plate frame and then the red calipers, and that kind of changed it a little bit, but not really too much. Um, the biggest thing that I didn't like about the altitude, that I still don't like about the altitude, is that the front grille inserts come with like a chrome silvery look. Um, which is kind of weird to me because everything else is blacked out on the Jeep So I'm not sure where they thought that that was the right idea So I went ahead and swapped those out which it was kind of a pain But I think it was definitely worth it because the whole front end completely changes when you black that out And it just all becomes one big blacked out area This would have been the first thing that I did to the Jeep or to any car that I ever get which is window tint um, I'll always go 20% on the side windows no matter what I have um, from now on I'll probably do the same setup that I have here where I have 20% all around and then 35 on the windshield I love how it looks and I like how it kind of it's still drivable at night and it's not too bad but it definitely gives the Jeep and any vehicle just a little bit more uh, privacy and it, it just looks so much better so I had to wait and I actually ended up doing this uh, like a month or so after I got the Jeep where my intention was to pick up the Jeep and bring it right there and get it done because I, I don't like driving in a fishbowl uh, that's just me personally but I always recommend that to everyone you'll hear me say that in every single video window tint is like that one thing that I'm like get it doesn't like I'm like yes it is the thing like yeah it's a little bit risky if you're in a place like where I am where you like you can get pulled over for it most people aren't gonna get too bothered about it so window tint came then but it should have been the first thing next was the black lug nuts because they come with silver chrome lug nuts which I understand why because the black ones do get chopped up and then they get rusty and they don't look good where the chrome ones are just kind of there um, so I understand why they do that, but it just looks awful. So I swapped them out with the black lug nuts. It's kind of a pain, like I said, because they do get rusty when you take them off. No matter what you do, there's kind of no way to really protect them without them getting kind of ruined like that a little bit. But that's definitely one thing that I always recommend if you have the altitude. Just swap those out and it just kind of cleans it up a little bit because it's just black all around and just kind of kind of matches a little bit better. And then from there, I ended up going with the Crew Motorsports rear tail light kit, which normally I see a lot of people just have the full thing smoke tinted. Um, which I actually really like the look of, and I think I might do that either on this one or if I get a black SRT, I think it would look really good, just everything just smoked out really, really dark. Um, but for now, I have the Crew Motorsports one. I still like it. It kind of gives like an eye look to the rear light, and I, like I said, I like it, and that was, that was kind of when I did it. Um, you can see that I kind of started with small little things here and there as I was getting going, and then towards the end, you'll see that I've been like doing a lot of big stuff and kind of splurging for videos and stuff like that. So... 
uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're slowly just getting there. After that was the cargo mat, um, which was sent out to me, which was awesome. So like, as I was starting to make the videos, people started reaching out, little companies that wanted to uh, sponsor videos or send me stuff to do videos on. So I got a cargo mat, which I've had it in there since then. I wasn't sure if I was gonna actually use it, but I was like, I'll do a video on it. You know what I mean? Might as well. But I enjoy the cargo mat and I already had the floor liners that kind of matched it. They came from the factory, like they're Mopar ones that came with the car when I bought it. So I was like, I might as well get it and throw it in there. And like I said, I've had it in there and it's protected the back and I like how it looks. So after that was the first real big mod and that's when I did the cat back exhaust. So I have the AFE power cat back exhaust. Obviously I have a single exit as it is just a 2018 altitude package. It just has the single exit exhaust. So I just bought that, it was like a thousand dollars. Had a bunch of fights and pain to get it on and to get it here and everything. But I finally put it on and I have no complaints with it and I love how it is now on the Jeep and how it's been the whole time on the Jeep. But that was pretty much the first big mod that I did to the Jeep, the first one that was over a hundred dollars or anything like that. It was pretty much all cheap mods that I had been doing at that point and then that was the first expensive one that I did. And uh, yeah, like I said, I enjoy it still and I definitely would still recommend it even though I had some issues and I said I wasn't recommending it. I recommend the product. Next up, I had a more small stuff. I did the pedal covers, which are just like the SRT pedal covers. So they're metal instead of just like the big black rubbery looking ones. I think it makes it look a lot better and a little bit more sporty inside, which is kind of the vibe that I'm going for on my Jeep. Um, after that, I did tinted plate frames, which as you guys know, they're just tinted plate frames because uh, everything else is pretty much tinted out on the vehicle. So I wanted that to kind of flow with the tinted smoked look and uh, it looks really good. After doing that, I did LED bulbs all inside. Pretty much every single interior bulb is now an LED um, it, and they've been going strong for a while. They look good and I like how they look and I would definitely recommend replacing all the halogen bulbs with LEDs. After that, I put wheel spacers on. I only did them on the back. Uh, just to get a little bit more poke and a little bit more stance out of it. It was more just for the video of ordering like $40, $50 Amazon spacers and just testing them for kind of like a joke video. But I ended up keeping them on for a while until I got the new wheels and tires, which will be coming up in this video. And when I did that, I, uh, I took them off. But I had them on in the back for the longest time until I did that. And I liked how they looked. They performed okay. There was no issues or anything with them. But uh, yeah, it was kind of a joke when I got them and then they ended up staying on. Next was in the front, I did LED headlight bulbs as well as LED fog light bulbs. Um, so I got these from two different companies, but the headlight ones are good and they'll be linked in the description. The fog light ones were good as well. They were just pretty cheap compared to the other ones. But uh, yeah, so the headlights is something that was really needed and I really wanted to tint the windshield. Uh, I didn't do that at the same time that I tinted the side windows, by the way, I kind of didn't say that earlier. I didn't do that at the same time and I really wanted to do it, but the halogen bulbs were just not gonna cut it at night with a tinted windshield. So I needed to upgrade those. So I ended up swapping those with just some LED headlight bulbs that just go right in there. And uh, so far they've been good all this time. They've been killing it. I haven't had any issues at all. Knock on wood that they don't do anything now because that would suck to have my headlights go out, but they've been good so far. Then I got the red key fob, which if you guys haven't seen, it's just like the Hellcat SRT kind of red key fob. And you basically just swap out your key and put it inside of the actual case here. But it's not a case or anything. Like I said, it's just the actual plastic piece. Um, but yeah, I swapped that out, which was kind of not a mod on the car. I'm not sure if I classify that as a mod on the car. But I did it, I have a video on it, so I wanted to throw it in this video because it's something that I did to the car, I guess, in a way, because you need the key for the car. So yeah, I guess it's part of the mods. Then I was having the issue where the lug nuts were getting rusty. Like I was saying earlier, the black lug nuts, they get rusty. So that as they were getting rusty, I was super annoyed and having these rusty lug nuts on the nice shiny glossy black wheels. So I ended up just getting some vinyl covers for like 20 bucks, 25 bucks on Amazon, which slide over top of the lug nuts. They suck to get off, but they're not too bad. I guess if you use pliers, I ended up figuring that out and it wasn't too bad. But yeah, they cleaned it up and they made it look nice until I ended up going with the new wheels and tires. After that, I wrapped the interior with vinyl. I did carbon fiber as well as just kind of like a matte black kind of vinyl and just kind of cleaned up all the little silvery chrome spots inside and just made it look a lot more smooth. And I think it looks really good personally, even though I messed up and had a lot of issues. If I were to recommend it now, I would say don't do it yourself unless you're really good with wrap. Um, I would bring it somewhere and have them do it because mine is pretty messed up and has a lot of spots that are peeling now that it's been warm out and the sun's heating it up and it's expanding and stuff. So it's kind of annoying, but you don't really notice it too bad. And overall, it just cleans it up and makes it a little bit darker inside, which is, you know, I have it all tinted out with black interior. That's kind of what I'm going for is a little bit of a darker kind of vibe inside. And then I ended up getting the Crew Motorsports third brake light and reflector kit for the back, which basically just smoked it out to 20%, which is super, super dark on the actual reflectors, but it looks so good. And I, I love the way that that looks. That's one of my favorite things that I've done. Kind of want to smoke out the entirety of the back 
uh, tail lights because I think it would look so good to have them just completely blacked out. After that, I did the red push start button from an SRT, which was kind of a pain to install. Like it's simple once you get it out, but getting out the whole like Uconnect system really kind of sucks and it's kind of a pain. I broke some clips, so I ended up buying some replacement clips and fixing it. Not too big of a deal, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a fight to do for just a small little push start button. But to me, with the carbon fiber, I think it made it look a lot better and a lot more sporty inside. Then after that, I finally got my appointment and everything, pulled the trigger, got the 35% windshield tint which now I absolutely love especially when I'm driving around like I'm like it's like a nighttime kind of thing like no one can see in at all and I can see out perfectly fine so that's one thing that I love about it plus it keeps the car so much more cool if you guys get the ceramic kind of uh, tint then you're gonna get even more heat protection out of it and uh, it's gonna help you guys a lot with cooling off your car especially if you're in a place like Florida or something like that or like here during the summer it gets really really hot like today it's like almost 100 degrees and if you're not in the shade or anything like that, you're gonna be cooking. So that's one thing that I love about the windshield tint. After that, I just did a simple vanity mirror bulb because I didn't do that previously, which is just a little flip down mirror. Um, I swapped those out with blue LEDs on accident, but they came out okay and it's super simple to do. So you guys can check that video out. And then as you can tell the mirrors here, are, the little mirror caps are actually black where normally they come paint matched white or whatever color your uh, Jeep is on the altitude. Some of them come chrome on the higher models, which I'm not sure why, because chrome is so gross and I hate the look of it. But in those situations where you have the white one, or I guess the chrome one, I ended up trying covers and then I ended up just painting them. So both of those videos, like I said, are in there. And I love how it looks because the black ties in all the way around the windows and it just kind of puts everything where I want it and it just kind of ties everything in, kind of how I want it to flow, basically. I also did the front reflector kit. I don't know if you can see, you probably can. Uh, right over here I did the front reflector kit on the front headlights. First I was super skeptical, wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, wasn't sure if I liked it, wasn't sure if it was going to be something that I wanted to do. Uh, once I put it on I was kind of a little bit iffy about it, but as I've had them on now, by, by just a quick glance it looks super good and like unless you're staring at it then you're like oh, okay it goes over a little bit, it looks a little bit funky, but for the most part it looks super good and like I said everything else is tinted out and black and stuff like that so it really just ties in not having that big orange marker on the side. I also swapped out the original like OEM filter in the uh, original like OEM intake and I swapped that out with just a K&N filter. Just wanted to see if it did anything, sounded any different or anything like that because people claim that it does. It didn't but I tried that and just swapped it out for a video and then it ended up getting removed anyway. So I guess that was kind of a waste of time because like I said, I ended up, and money, because I ended up removing it fairly quickly after. I had been waiting three months and then I finally got my vanity plates, which you'll see in a second. I don't even have the front one on, but um, I have the rear one on still and I have BJP on my plate, which is cool. Um, it's expensive here. Uh, it's like $250, $300 a year or something like that to have that plate versus like a normal one, which is like 100 or something like that. So. You know, it kind of sucks, but you know, I want to have my BJP name on my car so people know that it's me. And of course, just it's just a nice little touch to have uh, when I'm putting all this money into my car. I want it to be kind of a little bit different, at least in a way where I have at least a custom plate. Now, I had this weird realization a few months ago where I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go all in and dump a bunch of money. I had a bunch of money saved up. I was planning on, you know, maybe buying a house and getting married or something and you know it just it, it, it didn't happen it didn't work out so it just it didn't happen it didn't work out so I had all that money saved up and not that I blew it all but I just put a big chunk of money into the car you know make myself happy kind of thing so I ended up doing the wheels and tires that I had been thinking about this was all within like one week or so I did a bunch of stuff so I did the wheels and tires which are 22 by nine and a half Hellcat replicas uh, someone was asking about the offset offsets on these are always going to be between 30 and 35 positive offset so the ones that i have are like oe creations or something like that and they're positive 35 offset and uh everyone that i've looked at has been positive 30 or positive 35 with these as far as taking the hellcat replicas and putting them onto a jeep platform so that's kind of uh yeah that's what they are and then they're wrapped in the nitto 420v tires in a 285 35r22 so that's what's on the Jeep there. And I was super stoked on this because the altitude ones were 20s and I, was, I wanted to go to the 22, fill it up a little bit more, make it look a little bit better and kind of give it that more sporty look, which it absolutely did. And like I said, that same week, I had a bunch of other stuff done. So I ended up getting the Eibach lowering springs, which as you can see, it's kind of lowered. Um, it's hard to really tell on video, I feel like, uh, but it's a lot lower because I'm six feet tall and it only comes up to like, yeah, I can see over the Jeep now. I couldn't before. It also gets rid of that rake, which is awesome because I hate the look of rake on any vehicle, especially trucks. Uh, when you get the rake on a truck, you have to level it out, do something with it. You're not going to lower it. Where this one, 
I went the opposite way and just lowered it and it looks good. One thing I will say with that is I wish I would have went with 305 tires. I think that will fill the wheel well a little bit better than the 285s obviously but the Nitto 420Vs don't come in that size, which actually really sucks because that's the one, I love these tires now, like they grip really well, they perform well, I like how they feel and I really, really like how they look. They have a really good tread pattern and just overall they really fit what I'm going for and I really like the look. After that, I decided to send it, do the K&N cold air intake. You guys had been asking and requesting it for the longest time. So I finally went ahead and did it. Wasn't sure if I wanted it, wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. And I love it now, and it was, it's, it's a great upgrade. It's, it adds so much more sound to the front. It's more throaty and deep, so it kind of uh, increases it a little bit. And it's a lot more fun to drive, and I don't know if it adds more power. I, I don't know if I believe that, but I definitely believe that you get a lot more sound out of it, and it's a lot more fun to drive. At the same time of just kind of full sending it, it's illegal to not have a front plate here. I know it is. People always ask me or DM me and let me know, and I'm like, I know it, it is, but I'm risking it anyway. Same thing with the windshield tint. But uh, yeah, so I ended up removing the front plate because I love the look of how clean it is in the front without the front plate, that big bulky plate frame. So I ended up removing that and filling the holes with little white paint caps, which again, like I said, all these things will have videos on how to do them and install them and all that kind of stuff. So just check out the Jeep playlist and you'll find what you're looking for. After that, I got the Taser, which the Taser enabled me to be able to install the paddle shifters because if you don't have them from the factory, you have to be able to go into the computer and actually enable them. So the Taser allows you to enable the paddle shifters as well as a bunch of other fun stuff which is really good for all the events and stuff that I go to because I can use the light shows and you know have the flashing lights so it's coming in handy a lot but I was able to get the paddle shifters that I wanted so that I can actually you know enjoy it a little bit more go under a bridge floor it downshift and just kind of get that sound from the exhaust and the intake and it's overall fairly enjoyable and then after that I debadged the vehicle so as you can see there's none in the front or the sides normally it says Grand Cherokee in black as well as Jeep in the front I removed those I also removed the 4x4 on the back so it only has the Jeep logo in the middle of the back because that one's hard to get out and it's kind of engraved plus I also just like having the one Jeep logo in the back so at least people know it's a Jeep you know if they're if they're ever wondering uh, it's not a RAV4 or something if they're not into cars I guess and then the last thing that I did up till now is the iDrive throttle controller which is basically like a pedal commander it's a throttle controller it's basically gonna allow you to be able to change the settings of how responsive the throttle is um, if you put it on like ultimate nine mode and then tap the gas, you're going to notice that it's a lot more responsive and torquey and kind of push you back because it's like the power's right there. It's kind of fun. I keep it in a lower mode. It makes it feel a little bit more responsive and a little bit more fun to drive, especially like I said, with having the intake and the exhaust, you know, all three combined with the paddle shifters. It's just overall, a lot of those things have made the car a lot more enjoyable and a lot more fun to drive from like a personal driving experience. Now that's kind of where I'm at as far as the build goes and where we're sitting right now. I do have a few more things planned, which the black roof wrap is hopefully gonna come soon-ish if I can find a place that can do it fairly soon for a good price. And that's just gonna be a full black wrap all the way back, which I think will be really good to kind of split up the car and make it a little bit different from everyone else's. Because right now it's just all white and all black, which even though I have like red calipers and 22s and it's lowered and everything's blacked out, I still think it needs that little touch to kind of push it over to change it from looking like it's a stock Jeep Grand Cherokee. I also have a few other things in the works, but I'm not going to mention them here or leak them yet, but there is a bunch more coming. As always, I always have stuff coming and I always have ideas, so make sure you guys do subscribe for those. Like I said, also, if you guys do want to subscribe and you're not already, there's new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. here on the channel, and I will get the Jeep logo if I hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of June. So maybe you guys can make it happen. I'm not sure. You guys got to really push it if you want that to happen, but I don't know if you guys could do it, so that's kind of a challenge for you. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button down below right now. Help the YouTube algorithm, help this video get out to more people, and help the channel grow. And as always, don't forget to check out Shop Lifestyle. Get yourself some lifestyle merch. But thanks for watching, guys. Peace. I feel like I am losing control.